As President Roosevelt came into office in 1933 at the height of the Great Depression, he began to institute sweeping changes in an attempt to stabilize the economy and create new jobs. I pledge myself to a new deal for the American people. This new deal Roosevelt had promised during his campaign was a series of domestic programs. One of the most well-known was the Works Progress Administration, which created jobs in sectors from construction to art. Commonly known as the WPA, the Works Progress Administration ultimately employed over 8.5 million people. Throughout the New Deal, black activists fought for reforms to enhance the benefits of the New Deal to black people. There were five arts-related projects created as part of the WPA, and one of them was the Federal Theater Project, a national program to create work for theater professionals. Headed by Hallie Flanagan, the Federal Theater Project launched in 1935 and aimed to engage the social issues of the time in communities around the country and create a non-commercial American theater. Central to its mission was the idea to democratize drama and make it available for all. One of the unsung heroes of this era was Rose McClendon. Rose McClendon was an acclaimed actress, producer, and co-founder of the Negro People's Theater in New York. She was part of an organizational meeting for the Federal Theater Project, during which she proposed the idea of creating separate Negro units around the country to specifically focus on black stories and black artists. The idea was enthusiastically received, and over the next year, the New York City Project organized the Federal Negro Theater at Harlem's Lafayette Theater, as well as the Negro Youth Theater, the African Dance Unit, and a vaudeville unit. Over 1,000 black artists on stage and behind the scenes were employed by the New York Negro Unit alone. Negro units were created in regions around the country. The Eastern region had units in cities such as Hartford, Boston, Philadelphia, and Newark. In the West were Seattle, Portland, and Los Angeles. The Midwest had units in Cleveland, Chicago, Detroit, and Peoria. And in the South, there were Negro units in Atlanta, New Orleans, Raleigh, and Birmingham. At the dawn of the Federal Theater Project, there were 17 Negro units. And by the end, there were additional units added in cities like Okmulgee, Oklahoma, Buffalo, Camden, and Durham, bringing the total to 22. This time brought a tremendous variety of plays. Often political, they included works such as Heaven Bound, a morality play adapted by Laura Ward, Frank Wilson's Walk Together Children, about the forced deportation of 100 African-American children, and Honra Bontom and County Collins' Conjure Man Dies, which was a farce in three acts based on the story by Harlem Renaissance writer Rudolf Fischer. The Newark Unit's production of a courtroom drama entitled The Trial of Dr. Beck was so successful it transferred to Broadway. Then there was Big White Fog, Natural Man, and the unproduced living newspaper Liberty Deferred. The units had resident playwrights and held workshops for writing and the technical trades of the theater. In most cases, black producers and directors were also at the helm of the unit. But years of attempting to tell the black political story and transform the American landscape through racial integration in the larger federal project found many artists, and also Flanagan herself, in front of the House Un-American Activities Committee. After four years, the federal theater project came to an end. But the rich archive of plays from the Negro units tell a wide array of stories and give tremendous insight into the thinking of the time. And that vibrant past is a part of our heritage today.